So, my name is Dan, and I work at a company here in Stockholm called Detectify. And Detectify have done quite a journey over the last couple of years. We have grown quite a lot. And like, I guess, like all of you in the audience, we have done a lot of new stuff in order to meet market needs and whatnot. And all of these things have a tendency to lead that you need to do some kind of technical transformations along the way in order to kind of grow with the company and grow with our customers. Um, and even though we believe that our teams are perfectly suited to take decisions that affect their own spaces, because we want them to be kind of autonomous to drive these things forward. When we're growing, we also see a need to create some kind of alignment. And during these days, we have talked quite a lot about kind of product visions and kind of knowing your customers and going all teams together in the same direction. But we also need to have some kind of a technical alignment. We can't forget about the architecture, because the architecture is the foundation to all the things that we are doing. So what we have done during this spring is look a little bit about how we can create a cohesive architecture that can meet kind of our needs today, but also meet our needs in the future. So we're not kind of falling into old traps. So if you're a company and you're facing kind of the same thing that we're doing, that you want to create alignment on technology, one of the first things that you might encounter is like, let's create something called a target architecture. Let's have a group of talented people. We put them in a team. We lock them in there for a couple of months, we draw a lot of boxes, we connect them with a lot of nice arrows. Then when we're done, we have this perfect artifact to showcase exactly what architecture would like to have in five years or so. The next step is, of course, to go out to the team and take this perfectly packaged solution. It's like, hey, please, please make this happen. And this is not really an empowering situation. Just come with solution and hope that people doesn't think for themselves and just Implement it, right? Same thing that we talk about when we talk about products and things like this. Another problem with target architecture is if you have this group of people that takes this amount of time to define these boxes and arrows, they have a tendency to fall in love with their own solutions, right? So if the team starts challenging this, it might be a challenge to the core of these people themselves. And these artifacts then get quite hard to change, which also is bad. And of course, with the solutions in general and in architectural solution for that matter. Uh, you typically go out to look at what are other companies doing, what are the bleeding, kind of new bleeding architectural patterns out there that we want to use. And you start to lose track on what's really important. And you focus more on the technology part instead of what we actually want to get out of it. So if we don't want to do kind of the target architecture out, what can we do instead? So what we did, we set off in order to create something we call the technical vision where we kind of looked for what are the effects that we want our architecture to do for us? What is it, more or less, that we want the architecture to enable in our organization? So we sat down and we started to think a little bit of kind of, well, we would like to have an architecture that enable us to have these kind of empowered teams, where they can take their own decisions, where they can innovate within their own respective places. And we started to define kind of what is empowerment for us. Perfect, let's do that. We also wanted our teams to be autonomous. What kind of architecture do we need in order to kind of be autonomous, to have teams to be able to work independently of each other as much as possible? We start to list down all of these kind of bullet points of the effect and kind of the goal that we would like to get out of the architecture that we are choosing. But then something interesting happened, because when we looked at all of these bullet points, they didn't really have that much to do with architecture, right? is more kind of how we are describing our perfect engineering department that we would like to work in that works for our particular needs. So this actually turned out to be our engineering vision instead of our technical vision. So the architect could be one part to kind of get us there, but it could also be how we work with people and culture, how we collaborate, ways of working and so on. So different functions and departments can do different things in order to take us to this shared goal. But today, I was here to talk about technology, right? So let's see what you can do on a technology plane in order to kind of get to this vision. Because it's kind of hard to say like, here's the vision, let's make it happen. There's probably some steps we need to take along the way. With that said, we need to talk a little bit about strategy, and especially technical strategy in this case, which is more or less not showing any solutions here either. It doesn't show any boxes or arrows and things like this, but it more captures our beliefs 
And our choices that we believe that if we are taking will take us one step closer to the vision, which we all would like to work against, or towards is the kind of the right word. Um, and this can be kind of hard to kind of just explain in a theoretical plane. So let's take some examples. So in our, ca our case, we believe that if we are democratizing data, making data available for everyone to use, we can empower teams to build new features and innovate their space with the data that is already available. This is perfect because if we're taking kind of this road direction in a sense, it will take us closer to the vision that we want to go in. Another thing is that we believe that if we're choosing our cloud platforms, native tooling, over bringing in th something from the side that we need to maintain on our own, we can be more efficient. We can focus on the thing that really matters for us, which is innovating on a business plane, rather than focus our efforts on maintaining kind of infrastructure and things like this. Perfect. And we have a lot of these kind of bullet points, which is kind of short showcasing what we believe will take us forward. That for works perfectly for us. And the interesting thing here as well, that none of these bullet points showcase how to do it, which technology to use. It's more or less just showcasing a direction. Now it's up for the teams on a need by need basis, in a sense, to kind of explore these things together and drive the technology part forward with this kind of help of alignment to the, towards the shared vision and with the different road choices that we're picking along the way. And here comes the next kind of important thing, because when you do a lot of vision work and a lot of strategy work, what you don't want to happen is that these artifacts that you're creating just simply becomes a document on the wall or something that you put in Confluence and say like, hey, um, from management to a checkbox, we've done the vision work, let's just move forward. These two things need to be ubiquitous in all the things that we're doing, which means that in all of the decision taking process, all the proposals, all the changes in our backlog, in our team communication and communication in the company, these things should be present everywhere. Because this is a tool, right? And if we're not using the tool, we will not get the benefit from it. So if you're a team, for example, and would like to drive some kind of a technical change, sometimes it could be hard to kind of motivate for your team or for your organization that you want to take this kind of time to refactor something. This is also a tool for kind of sharing well, we want to do this because it will kind of enable us to do these strategy directions, which will take us partly to this part of the vision. And also things with cross-team related work. Much easier to collaborate across teams if you have the same vocabulary and the same kind of idea on where you're taking the architecture forward. So what I'm trying to say about all of these things is all of you in here have teams, and in these teams you have a lot of developers and individuals that are talented in the things that they are doing. So please don't tell them exactly how to solve things, but empower them to find their own way forward. And here it's kind of important because the teams are still kind of in a local scope. They're working with their part of the product and they're perfectly fine to take decisions within their particular space. But as I mentioned, we still would like to have some kind of cohesive architecture across all of these teams. So we can help them along the way. We can help together to set this vision to have the shared goal. We can help kind of choosing some directions by adding some strategy with our choices and beliefs in order for us to take us step by step closer to this particular place. And this was kind of what I want to leave you off with here today. If you want to talk more about this, about technical visions or technical strategy or how to combine them with your product strategy, uh, find my, me here during the conference so we can chat in the corridors. But otherwise, thank you.